Hi guys, we're very excited to be here for the very old session. As you see, we have our masks ready for the theme. This was totally my idea. <laughs> and, um, great story. I got this mask when I was in college and didn't think I would ever wear it again, but I wore it for, of course, a party with Deirdre Corrigan where she spritzed it up with nice glow in the dark eye paint around it. Um, <laughs> We should turn off the lights for that. <laughs> we should actually, yeah. So the first tune that we're gonna play um, is Down the Back Lane, right? And the second one is Patty Taylor Shake, and the third one is uh, Piper's Chair. Um, Bob, I know that you're in Riverdale, so I hope that we can hear your hop all the way from Riverdale while we're sitting on our couch and listening to this. All right, guys, I miss everyone. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and this has been such a treat for us every week and it's been so nice and we've loved tuning in every week and seeing everybody and everyone's comments and it's been really, really, really fun. All right. This is Katie, by the way, <laughs> in case there's any confusion.
Corn book that we're gonna do is Cronin's, which I know everyone knows, and we're gonna go into the Taylor Twist. <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, 
Hi everyone. Um, I have been informed that there is a theme of masks and uh, strange instruments or unusual instruments for this evening. Um, so it's always the challenge to see if you can come up with an instrument um, mask. mask, mask. Uh, an instrument that is stranger than the Illin pipes. But I feel like I've done it. Uh, and I have um, Sir Isaac Alderson's um, backing on this, as when I told him I had gotten a hurdy-gurdy, a hurdy-gurdy, he said, Wow, man, you found the only instrument stranger than the Illin pipes. Uh, well, maybe. Um, anyway, here it is. Hurdy-gurdy, or a wheel fiddle, uh, vieille la rue. Um, or Drehelie in German. There's a bunch of names for it. Um, it's basically a sort of modified fiddle kind of body. Uh, and then it has a key box um, to change the notes. And uh, instead of a bow, and this is sort of the key thing, it has a crank. And the crank rubs the wheel against the underside of the strings. And of course, you can actually, because it's a circle, have as many strings on it as you want. So in this case, it's got drone, melody, or even two melodies if you want. Uh, the other one's a different key. Um, and then this thing at the top called a trumpet. Um, these two just go... Etc. right? But, for rhythm, since you can't bow the way you would with a fiddle, right? Um, you have this thing called a chien. And it's a little bridge that is not fixed. Um, so if I play it all together, it sounds much the same, but with an extra drone. Etc. Right, but if I accelerate the wheel while I'm turning it, you'll hear it buzz because the floating bridge um, is dragged up by the acceleration of the wheel, which makes it go uh, like this. check this and see how it actually records but uh, that's the idea anyway um, so that what that's what gives you your rhythm as you're playing uh, now, I'm not a very good Gurdy player um, this was absolutely a piece of um, opportunism opportunism um, you might get a crack out of the story it was uh, a mate of mine sat down me uh, next to me in a session with one of these and I avoided Gurdy's for all my life, thinking that they were just invariably awful. And he had this fantastic instrument, and I uh, sat down next to me when I couldn't avoid him, started playing it, and it completely changed my notion of, of what this instrument was. Um, and then one came up for sale with cracks in it, uh, and I thought, I live in New York, and there's loads of great crack repairmen for all the orchestras, right? So, uh, so I grabbed it, and it came from the Russian Federation in a large tea chest to the theatre that um, that I play at with uh, Caitlin and Chris um, of this parish. Uh, and uh, and sure, everybody was like, do you know that you've got a tea chest from the Russian Federation downstairs? Hurdy-gurdy. So I was actually talking to uh, uh, my uh, hurdy-gurdy teacher uh, uh, and I said, look, this is the gurdy I'm playing. And he said, I know that gurdy. He's in Barcelona in Spain. There's not many Gerties in the world, I guess. Um, all right, I'll try and play you a small tune.
Okay guys, we're gonna take a break from our masks and we're gonna continue on with our slower set. And the first one is called the pipe on the hob number one. And the uh, second one is the pipe on the hob number two. The pipes on the hobs. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tunes with Caitlin all over the city and definitely next time I have the right to travel and make it to New York I will come and play with you guys um, until then Caitlin asked me to send you a video and so she didn't specify what the theme was gonna be for whatever session this would get slipped into so in the spirit of someone who's been self-isolating for a month anyway, I thought I'd come up with my own theme, which is why I'm wearing what I'm wearing, a sort of pandemic-ready uh, three monkeys theme, as you'll see when I gear up. Um, I'm gonna play three jigs that I associate with New York, because that's where I learned them, and they were actually put together as a set by the New York Cayley Band which went to the All-Irelands in around 1960. 
and consisted of Andy McGann, Patty Reynolds, Larry Redigan, Jack Cohen, Felix Dolan, um, Patty O'Brien, who am I leaving out, who am I leaving out, sorry guys. Um, the first jig, the name on it I have is the New York jig, and I'd love to know if somebody has a more solid name than that. The second one is Contentment is Wealth, and the third one is the Glamour jig. And one more thing before we get started, I'm going to um, give you guys a note to tune to, because if I came and sat in your session, this is exactly what I would do first thing. Um, I can't tune to you, and even if you're playing at home, when you start playing with me, it's going to sound bad if we're not in tune, and rather than you have to stop and try and tune up to me playing, uh, I'm just going to give you a note now. So here's an A. No, I'm not flipping you off. Okay, everybody in tune? Let's get going. Bye. <laughs> 
I'm sure you guys all enjoyed that <laughs> photo. Uh, the next set is going to be uh, Lady on the Island, George White's favorite, and Last Night's Fun. Mm -hmm. virtual um virtual session madness is madness right uh i didn't know what to do with it so uh i thought i would uh do a small bit of experimentation um uh, not something i've been uh ever really much into but uh you know stuck in my own room for more or less a month and a half um 
you start uh, thinking of doing stuff that you didn't do before. So uh, I thought I'd play a couple of flute tunes, as you know, I'm at least somewhat a better flute player than I am a Gertie player. Uh, and um, these are a couple of great tunes, at least I really like them, uh, really good flute tunes. Um, the first one I got from Kieran O'Hare, it's called The Cow That Ate The Blanket. It's a lovely, lovely little tune. Simple sort of old school jig. Um, really cool, I, I think anyway, and I hadn't thought of it in years. Um, and uh, when I was trying to think of something to play for this, uh, I thought, oh, it popped into my head and I thought, oh, I'll give it a shot. Uh, and it brought another tune with it that I don't think I ever played with it before, but I knew I played a lot at about the same time. And this one um, is uh, also, I think, a lovely tune. It's by a, uh, a fiddler named Brendan Tonra, who was a, uh, a Sligo man who lived uh, much of the latter part of his life in Boston, um, if I've got that right. And uh, I, I got to play with him some years ago. Um, great in a session in Boston. It was really cool. Uh, and I played this tune, um, and he was he was dead pleased. He was really chuffed um, that somebody was playing one of his tunes. I mean, people play his tunes all the time. There's a, a more famous one than this that people really do play all the time. Um, but he, you know, was an old fella, and it was a tune he'd written, and he was just delighted. Anyway, this one he wrote after um, uh, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, uh, amazingly enough. Um, it's a bit chirpy tune for this. Now I think about it, but uh, he calls it Farewell to Kennedy. Um, so I'll give a shot at getting around those. And the the thing that I'm doing that I didn't think I would ever do, um, I used to frown upon stuff like this, is um, I've actually uh, dubbed myself in uh, playing the drum um, after the fact. You'll see I'm wearing a different shirt because uh, I played the tunes yesterday and, um, and uh, trying to attach the drum to them today for you. I don't know if this this is um, it's kosher uh, st and rani. Um, anyway, here you go.
was so nice to see everyone tonight. What a, what a treat. And so nice to see Ben and Louisa. Uh, thank you so much to Mimi and Caitlin and Chris and Tune Supply for having us. The first tune is going to be Maude Miller's. The second one is Lilies in the Field. And the third is Kiss the Maid Behind the Barrel. Stay well, everybody. See you all soon. <laughs> Oh.